Hello, my name is Dr. Frederick Moxley. I worked for the original predecessor of the College of Information and Cyberspace back in the 1980s. It was my first job involving computers and guess you could say where I launched my career in the field. DOTSI was a leading graduate level academic institution that was responsible for teaching the management of automated information systems to senior military and civilian executives within DOD and other organizations government-wide. Before its initial name change and moved to Fort McNair, it was located in Building 175 at the Washington Navy Yard. DOTSI became an element of the National Defense University during the early 80s. At the time, the directorship of DOTSI was traditionally held by a Navy captain in 06, and still was when I came on board. My position entailed curriculum, registration, course monitoring, data, and records management. However, I had been attending courses in computer science at both George Mason University and Fort Myers Education Center after work at the time. So it wasn't long after coming on board that it, I also became a member of DOTSI's computer systems team. DOTSI had an HP 3000 mini computer that was used primarily for data entry and retrieval purposes, providing access via monochrome monitors and dumb terminals. Being a member of the systems team entailed performing computer operations such as backups, installing software updates, developing simple command routines using Hewlett Packard's MPE, also known as the Multi-Programming Executive Operating System, all the while, of course, ensuring that security and data integrity measures were maintained and adhered to. This provided me with the opportunity to garner experience working in a real-world computing environment. Programs that needed to be processed were categorized by level of priority, which meant they were prearranged and stacked in a queue with the highest prioritized jobs or programs running first, then the next, and so on. As our HP contained numerous records with vast amounts of sensitive data, access to the computer room was closely monitored and a sign-in log was posted outside, which required time of entry, time exiting, etc. As a carryover from the days when mainframes were in common use, the floor of Dotsie's computer was elevated and the temperature for the room was always kept quite low so that it wouldn't overheat and possibly compromise its processing performance, if you will. As a result, it wasn't unusual to see someone wearing a sweater or a jacket to stay warm while inside, even during the midst of the summer. Interestingly enough, and unknown to most, our mini computer was remotely accessed for use by NDU's Wargaming and Simulation Center which was located directly underneath the entrance to the National War College on the main campus at Fort McNair, just a few miles away. War games and other types of simulations were periodically conducted in conjunction with the Pentagon. So accessing the HP 3000 for other than official business was strictly prohibited. Most of the courses at DOTSI involving completing exercises and assignments on PCs within our computer labs the PCs had two floppy disk drives, and even though they didn't yet have hard drives, they were pretty much considered state-of-the-art at the time. We had a mixture of military and civilian personnel that was comprised of approximately 50% of each or thereabouts. The director, when I came on board, was Captain George King, who I believe passed away shortly after retiring, as we were informed about it at the time. His successor was Captain H.R. McDaniel, a very fine gentleman who was supportive to all under his command. The deputy of the DOTC was Mr. Al Matulovich, who held a degree in mathematics and had worked for the FBI earlier in his career. He too was a very fine man. In fact, I guess you could say that the staff was comprised of quite a few exceptional people overall. We had a cadre of military officers and civilian instructors who were well versed in the subject matter they taught. 
along with several enlisted and civilian administrative support personnel. We additionally had a military exchange officer from the United Kingdom on board. In addition to the classrooms, we also had a very well-managed library that was filled with the latest material regarding information technologies, as well as a wonderful audio-visual department. The staff was usually kept busy dealing with the day-to-day goings-on affiliated with an institute of higher learning. DOTSI was a member of a regionally accredited consortium of universities, and courses were full-time and ran every day from one to two weeks in length with transfer credit obtainable through select degree programs in the area. Certificates were conferred upon students who successfully fulfilled all of the course requirements. Staff members were permitted to attend courses periodically throughout the year to see whether there was room for improvement and the goals as established were successfully being met. Having an interest in learning as much as possible that I could about computers I attended some of DOTSI's courses when time permitted for my own benefit as well. In addition to these courses, I was granted permission by our director, Captain McDaniel, to enroll in Army's Automated Information Systems Officers courses via correspondence, and was fortunate enough to successfully complete them during my off hours. The courses taught at DODSI, although somewhat technical, were typically approached from a managerial perspective. However, this was very much needed as the field in general was not well understood by most executives during the period of the time. Course topics included concept design and development, systems analysis, managing systems acquisition, project management, the Privacy Act, and a few others. Our most prominent course at the time was entitled Automated Information Systems Management for Intermediate Executives. I say prominent in that it was usually filled to capacity and had a long waiting list due to the fact that Grace Hopper was the course's capstone speaker. Funny story if I may digress just a bit. Prior to coming on board DOTSI, I had seen Grace Hopper in a segment on 60 Minutes which impressed me quite a bit. I remember telling my then girlfriend, who is now my wife, how much I would like to work with someone like her, as she was not only gifted, but inspirational. Well, without knowing about Dotsy or the fact that she lectured there, about a year later, I was working in the same institute with her, which came as a complete, albeit a pleasant, surprise to me at the time. As it turned out, I was able to meet and talk with her on numerous occasions during my time there. She had an office on the Navy Yard, but her primary office was at the Pentagon. She usually gave the same lecture each and every time, only adding something of note that may have occurred since the last time it was given. As she finished speaking, she typically waited to be picked up by one of her adjutants. What most people aren't aware of is that she was a heavy smoker, so I usually accompanied her when she went outside the building while doing so. It was during these times that she was most candid in talking with me, often speaking her mind, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I can recall one time in particular when she was reminiscing about Admiral Rickover. Admiral Rickover visited the command building on the Navy Yard periodically in order to work on his memoirs. I mentioned that he often walked by where we were standing on his way through the parking lot. And she looked around and shared an amusing story about him with me at the time. While at a social event, I believe that was held somewhere in downtown D.C., Admiral Rickover spotted her across the room and asked her rather loudly, how many degrees did she now have? In which she explained, he was referring to honorary degrees. Her response was, oh, I don't know, or she wasn't really sure, as she really didn't care to discuss the matter in which Rickover said, Oh, come now, Gracie, how many? Her response was, Well, let me see, I think 31 or 32. He immediately responded, Well, I have 33. Without losing a beat, she responded politely, Well, that's because you're older, Admiral. I, of course, laughed. 
She relayed other stories to me about meetings and events she attended across the nation, which I eagerly listened to. She also was kind enough to ask about my ambitions and afterwards gave me some sound advice. All in all, she was always inspiring and encouraging. I believe that she really enjoyed conversing with and influencing people, especially young people who she felt would be the next generation of leaders. While I was at Dotsie, she gave me a few mementos that I have kept and still value. Among these include her famous nanoseconds, which were pieces of multicolored electrical wires that were cut about 11.8 inches in length, just shy of 12 inches. She also honored me by taking pictures with me and smiled for a picture that I had taken with her. She also told me stories about her days working with Howard Aiken and the Mark I and her effort towards developing the first compiler and the COBOL programming language. I told her that I had taken courses in COBOL and Pascal and various other courses in computer science, in which she, in which she asked me why I wasn't working as a computer programmer for the Navy. I learned later that uh, this was conveyed to our deputy director, Al Matulovich, who wrote a letter on my behalf just for this purpose. As a result, I applied and was offered and accepted a position with the Navy as a computer programmer analyst not long after that. After she retired, I saw her at a conference. She had become a spokesperson for digital computers and, of course, was now wearing civilian clothes. I had the opportunity to go up and say hi and ask her if she remembered me. As I was no longer wearing a name badge as before, she responded that, of course she did. You were with Dotsy. Knowing that she had to leave, she asked if I had received my Pico seconds that were displayed on a table nearby, which looked like packets of granulated pepper. She stated that each one represented the time it takes for a signal to travel in picoseconds. Of course, I have one of these as well. I have a lot of fond memories regarding Admiral Hopper, as she played a big role on influencing the direction of my career, and I am grateful for it. As you may imagine, like her nickname, she was, and always will be, amazing grace to me. Dotsie made an impact on me as it served as a segue to a career in the field of information technology and provided exposure to someone as phenomenal as Grace Hopper. Although familiar with various military processes and procedures, I also learned about DOD's rainbow security standards, which were booklets on security measures in different color codes while I was at the Dotsie. I can remember a couple of early iterations we had concerning password management and other security requirement publications while I was there. This formulated the importance of cybersecurity to me, which has continued to grow over time ever since. Regardless of where I worked over the course of my career, I always kept a small picture of Admiral Hopper near my desk in which she was handing me those nanoseconds I mentioned earlier which always reminded me of my time at Dotsy. And in the early 90s, I attended a course on information engineering that was taught by the Information Resources Management College, or IRMC, which of course was the new name for Dotsy, but had since moved to Fort McNair. However, there were only a handful of people who had stayed on during the transition. Most others had either retired or moved on, as I recall. When I think back, I can remember one of the Dotsie instructors and computer systems team members, a major in the Air Force at the time, telling me that if you want to have a great future, then learn how to program in ADA. For those who don't know, ADA was a software programming language that was sponsored by the Department of Defense. Those were prescient words when I think back on it now, as I ended up serving as the acting deputy director of the ADA Joint Program Office which was referred to as the AGPO, when it transitioned to the Defense Information Systems Agency 
and then eventually to industry. In 1995, while it was still under the AGPRO, it became the first standardized object-oriented programming language in the world. In 1997, I completed my first doctorate in information systems and science, which was entitled on the development of a software architecture for a distributed information system that can support the warrior as envisioned by the U.S. Department of Defense. That's a mouthful. However, within the acknowledgement section, I added, I would like to also thank the late Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper for telling me to never lose sight of your dreams, young man, for one day you can make those very dreams a reality. Later, while a fellow at the United States Military Academy at West Point, cadets, when they visited my office and saw the picture on the shelf nearby, would ask me, who is that lady with you? In which I explained to most of them who didn't know that was Grace Hopper. I also explained what Dodsey was and what it came to be. Several years later, when I was appointed the Technical Director of the Joint Information Environment on behalf of the Department of Defense, we were on a very tight schedule to design, develop, and deliver the architectural blueprints known as artifacts on which future systems across the department were to be built. It became a bit contentious to ask for permission to do things in a manner that ran against the grain. As a result, the words of Grace Hopper would usually come to mind. It is often easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission, which always served me well when it came to making what I felt was the right technical decision in a timely manner. However, it also didn't hurt to check and recheck time and time again before formal implementation. Over the course of my career, I did run into a few people who had served as staff members from DOTSI from time to time in roles as contractors working for the Army or or elsewhere, but only a few. I also knew of a couple who went to work for defense agencies such as DESA, which I remained in occasional contact with. However, I am uncertain as to how many of the members of the DOTSI staff are still working in the field at this time. The following are some of the mementos I still have from my time at DOTSI. Here are a few of the nanoseconds that Grace Hopper gave me when I was at the Dodsey. And this is a pocket protector that all of us got, or most of us had, I should say, that wanted them to protect our shirts from ink overruns. And this, of course, is a name badge that we were all given with the emblem of the Institute on it. And this is Dodsey's publication of selected computer articles that we had a chance to contribute towards. And here's an example of a course completion certificate. This is a picture I took of Admiral Hopper in which she's smiling. It's quite rare, actually, to see her smiling in a picture. Look to the future optimistically. Embrace it. Contribute to it. Commit to completing the hard work, even if it seems insurmountable. You can do it. Always be a team player and take your role, whatever it is, very seriously. I am sure that if Grace Hopper were alive today, she would be excited about all of the new technologies that are on the horizon, especially those associated with the quantum information science realm. I too believe that the possibilities associated with quantum are endless. This is why we need to get there first. We need to keep ahead of the competition and prepare for the future right away. Take the reins on behalf of DOD by addressing new technologies that will change the world as we know it now. Create a demonstration laboratory that works together with the service labs. 
conduct or host demonstrations that promote emerging technologies, infuse and promote change, and above all, lead by example. On a final note, another great quote from Admiral Grace Hopper, which I really like, and we'll leave you with it. You don't manage people, you manage things. You lead people.